untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt Reanimator deck featuring 4 copies of A Soul of a Windgrace, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4 mana 5 4 legendary cat avatar that when it enters the battlefield or attacks, lets us put a land card from our graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under our control, so it can even get lands from the opponent's graveyard. Can also pay a single green and discard land card to gain 3 life, 1 and a red discard land to draw, and 2 and a black discard a land card to give indestructible until end of turn and tap or soul of wind grace so a ton of great utility in the late game once we no longer need to play out our lands and also great synergy with our fetch land riveteers overlook as we can play the overlook and fetch up a swamp mountain or a forest and gain one life and then as soon as we get it back with soul of wind grace it immediately gets sacrificed even if it enters tapped to fetch up one of those lands and gain a bit of life in the process so that's a great way to put a land in our graveyard without needing to discard it to the abilities first so we can get immediate value. Now calling this a reanimator deck might be a bit of a stretch since we're only playing three reanimation spells but it's a doozy. Cruelty of Gix on the first chapter lets us take a look at the opponent's hand, choose a creature or planeswalker card and make them discard it. On chapter 2 we can search our library for any card and put it into our hand at the cost of 3 life, so basically a grim tutor, don't even have to show the opponent what we searched up. And on the final chapter we can return a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. And this also features the read ahead mechanic new from Dominaria United, so we can potentially skip the first two chapters if we want to, to go straight into chapter 2 or chapter 3 if that lines up better. Let's say the opponent is empty handed, probably no point in getting the first chapter here. So Cruelty is our main reanimation spell, but it's also just a good card in a grindy matchup in this mid-range deck, which is probably a better description than a reanimator, since we're happy enough just playing a grindy mid-range game. Soul of Windgrace also ramps us by getting back lands from the graveyard, so we can eventually just hardcast our Titan of Industry, which would otherwise be our main reanimation target, the 7-7 Reach Trampler, that when it enters can make a 4-4 Rhino token, maybe put a shield counter somewhere, take out artifacts or enchantments, or even gain 5 lands life if we need to gain some life in the aggressive matchups. And then we also have a one-off Cemetery Desecrator, which is a nice tool to potentially search up with the second chapter, and then we can just cast it, or maybe if we have a Blood Token from Blood Tithe Harvester, we can even discard one of the creatures we search up, and then bring it back with the third chapter to reanimate them. And then the Desecrator, when it enters or dies, gets to exile a card from any graveyard, and then remove X counters from a permanent where X is the mana value of the exile card, or give a creature minus X minus X until end of turn. So that's a great way to maybe finish off a planeswalker by removing loyalty counters or just kill a creature when it enters. And then by exiling cards from graveyards we can also get rid of opposing copies of Tenacious Underdog for instance, we're playing two copies ourselves as another nice mana sink in the late game thanks to Blitz. And then that's also the reason why we're playing the full set of Flame Blast Bolt to deal two damage to a creature or planeswalker, and if that creature or planeswalker would die, we exile it instead. So great answer to opposing underdogs, can also finish off a planeswalker like Liliana, which of course we're also playing in this deck as a nice way to remove creatures by making the opponent sacrifice. And then the plus one makes each player discard a card, which is a way to potentially set up our third chapter of Cruelty by discarding one of our larger creatures. And then we've got a bit more spot removal with Infernal Grasp, and two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre can also be a nice one to search up with Chapter 2 if we need a sweeper effect. And then the Harvester is a great individual card, has synergy with the Blood Tokens, allowing us to discard at instant speed to maybe get around a Graveyard Trespasser, which can exile our cards out of our graveyard. And then we can also copy it with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki once we transform our Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And Reflection's awesome with both Harvester as well as, of course, our Titan of Industry and our Cemetery Desecrator, which both have powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities. And then the second chapter gives us a way to discard cards as well. And the Shaman can also potentially help us make some extra mana with the treasure token if it somehow survives. And yeah, that's most of our deck, our mana base as we mentioned, four copies of Overlook to synergize with Soul of Windgrace, which will also require some basic lands to search up. So we've got three swamps, two mountains, two forests, then the four copies of Proving Ground for additional mana fixing, 
couple dual lands, and then one Abandoned Mire, which can also get something back out of our graveyard. Could also play both Seiju and Crucible, but in my experience we don't end up uh, channeling those very often. So even though they might have a bit of synergy with Soul of Windgrace, in practice it doesn't really come up all that often. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Harvester can potentially even discard a land with our blood token to enable Soul of Windgrace. And uh, turn to Swamp will let us cast it on curve. Opponent's green-white enchantments. Naturalist is scary. Scary enough for me to potentially want to bolt it. Now there are some other creatures we wouldn't mind exiling with bolt, like the uh, two-mana Kami. But uh, yeah, that does mean letting them untap with Naturalist. Yeah, I think we'll uh, let it happen here. And then next turn Harvester can also potentially just kill Naturalist with its ability. It's gonna be Weaver of Harmony for one mana. And Wedding Announcement, so pretty efficient turn thanks to the discount. Naturalist stays back. So we can Bolt Weaver and then finish off Naturalist here. That seems fine. And then discard either Titan or Lance to get back with Soul of Windgrace next turn. And only one creature means they won't be able to draw with the wedding announcement. The 1-1 one -one token does make our Liliana a worse top deck. So that's a potential concern. Announcement triggers, and yeah, we'll use our blood token. And I'm tempted to just discard land here to get immediate value of our soul. And then we're just ramping into our Titan of Industry instead of trying to reanimate it. Don't expect my soul to stay in play for long. Okay, Point's gonna channel Visionary to get back Naturalist, that's fine. Alright, we actually drew a reanimation spell, which could have rewarded us for discarding Titan instead. So I'm expecting Soul of Windgrace to be exiled by some removal spell, but then next turn we could still Cruelty, and then we're not too far from casting Titan. Alright, just a Spirited Companion, so maybe they don't have an answer to Soul, which would be great. Now we can no longer bolt the Naturalist until we can get rid of the festivity with our titan. And then for now, what's our plan? Probably want to start by just checking out their hand with cruelty. And then I could get a meat hook massacre as well. Alright, opponent does not have any creatures or planeswalkers, just a bunch of enchantments including a leyline binding. So that makes me more inclined to want to attack with soul of wind grace, although I won't have any lands to get back with it. So maybe I should just hang back anyway, and then force them to use Leyline Binding, which we can get rid of with Titan as well if needed. And then next turn Mihido Massacre will probably wipe the board, so that seems fine. They could also get rid of the Cruelty, but then we'll still have a Soul to block at least. Right, so opponent does go for Sunrise, can either draw or maybe pump the team. And then a Meat Hook Massacre for 3 would still keep our soul in play. Alright, opponent's pumping the team to set up a pretty big attack. And then it shouldn't matter too much which creature we block here. Okay. So get Meat Hook Massacre. And then we want to attack first. And then I can activate Soul of Windgrace to gain 3 by discarding a land since we'll get it back anyway. And then still Massacre for 3. And then next turn we can cast our Titan as well as getting back something from the graveyard, which could also be the opponent's card here. Although, probably fine to go with a Harvester. Another Weaver. Sunrise. 
making three mana so they can leyline binding my soul of wind grace. Okay, what do we like? Could also go for a spirited companion to draw a card. So harvester versus maybe a spirited companion. I guess naturalist also has a bit of synergy with our cruelty. I think harvester might still be the better long-term uh, pick here. And then we can free Soul of Wind Grace if we'd like, which can get back or fetch land right away. So we'll blow up an enchantment. And then a Rhino token seems fine. All right, that's a lot of value. Got another Cruelty to leverage here as well. And then it's not going to take long for us to get another Titan in play, blow up another enchantment, and take it from there. Can combine our Bolt with Harvester to kill Weaver, if that's a concern. Could also use Cruelty to fetch up another Titan by going straight to Chapter 2, and then I can discard it with my Blood Token to reanimate it next turn already, which I also don't mind. So a lot of cool plays available, but uh, we can probably start by attacking with a team. Get back our fetch land. Opponent takes it. And I guess they just die. Alright, works for me. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Turn to Harvester, turn three Liliana. Can maybe discard Titan to later reanimate it. Opponent with a one drop here, so might be on mono black aggro. So Liliana's minus two, not looking too amazing, although we can combine it with Harvester to maybe kill whatever we really want to kill. Conscript attacks. Yeah, I mean, I could trade if our plan is to minus two. Might as well. And underdog. Okay, now we could play a Fable of the Mirror Breaker instead. Is that preferable? Or just Liliana minus two anyways. Next turn, play Fable. We'll try that approach. will give us an extra turn to decide what to discard with the second chapter. Right, Trespasser shows up. And a Flame Blast Bolt. So, don't really want to discard creatures that the Trespasser will be able to exile. Now we can discard at instant speed with our blood token, or we can wait until the Fable. So it makes it tricky to discard to Liliana here, since I kind of want to keep Bolt to exile underdog, so we might have to give them Desecrator to exile with Trespasser anyways if we're interested in plussing Liliana, or we can keep Liliana at one loyalty, which is also an option, since uh, she's probably gonna die here to an attack after the opponent removes our Shaman, so I'll wait. Could also block and then Flame Blast Bolt to finish off Trespasser, because it's such a problem card for us. Best case scenario is a Blitz Underdog, which we get to exile. Alright, Infernal Grasp kills our Shaman. So Liliana down. And then I can either use my Blood Token or keep it around for later. Assuming I'm happy discarding Desecrator and Titan here. And then really hoping to draw our 5 mana saga to bring them back. Another Liliana would be decent if we can kill whatever they play next. Opponent does nothing. Yeah, I mean using the blood token just digs a card deeper to make sure we find an answer to Trespasser or find a reanimation spell. So Titan plus Fable can go. And we found another Harvester, 
which we can play alongside Fable. Opponent's probably killing Harvester here, so the Trespasser is going to go to town. But we don't have much else going on. Alright, no removal end of turns, kind of surprising. So they were maybe holding back in case of a Meat Hook Massacre. Gonna be Liliana now. Sack the Goblin. Never mind, Liliana pluses, so we discard Bolt. And happy enough trading for Trespasser here. Opponent can bring back their Conscript if they'd like. It's gonna be a Knight instead. Alright. So we can discard Proving Grounds, looking for maybe a Soul of Wind Grace would be nice. Just a land. So I can loot it away in the hopes of finding something better. And a Titan of Industry, which they can maybe make us discard with a Liliana now. Although they will be tempted to just minus two. And then with a land, we could actually cast Titan. Alright, so Reflection's gone. Underdog blitzed, and yep, yeah, hoping for an untapped land to cast Titan. And then we still have another Reflection to potentially combo with it. There we go. Then we'll make a Rhino to protect against Liliana's minus two. And we could put a shield counter on either one of our creatures as well. Question is, which one? Probably the Titan, which is more valuable if they have removal for reflection here. They still have a lot of ways to use their mana between Blitzing Underdog, leveling up Sleeper. So, Sacrifice or a Rhino. And hope their last card's not removal for Reflection, and if we get to untap with Titan, it's probably game over. So I could block. It's a little risky if they have removal, because then they can kill the Titan instead of Reflection, potentially even in response to us targeting it. So it's probably okay to take 3 damage here. So they get to see one more card for maybe an Infernal Grasp to kill Reflection right now. Cut down would also work, but nope, but I'm just bringing back conscripts. And yeah, we get to copy Titan, which is usually enough to end the game. And our opponent agrees, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Can uh, get a second black source, turn to maybe Bolt, although I wouldn't be able to Bolt if I get a Swamp, so I might actually want to play Veil. Then get a Swamp so we can Bolt turn 2 and then turn 3, Fable. Now Liliana's also an option. Up against blue, white and green. And looks like a human tribal deck. Thalia, okay. It's a little awkward since we weren't able to Bolt at end of turn. And now I can play my 3-drop on curve. So... Probably just gonna bolt it now, but we'll wait and see what else they play. Might change their decision, let's say they play an Adlin here. Which uh, wouldn't make a token after we kill Thalia. It's gonna be Shanna, which we can Edict with Liliana. So they might have some uh, life gain synergies as well. Enough with the mysteries. I've... Sacrifices must be made. And uh, double cruelty in hand. So the late game is taken care of. Partners is scary. But a Titan's excellent, so can play cruelty and reanimate a Titan right now if we want. After discarding it with a Liliana. I'm tired of your secrets. Kind of like that idea instead of getting more value from cruelty, which is also an option. But I just want to protect my Planeswalker 2 here. 
make a Rhino. And then... Opponent could have Brutal Cathar to exile one of my creatures. But shield counter still seems better than gaining a life. And I'll protect Titan. If they want to exile it with a Brutal Cathar, we'll probably find a way to kill the Cathar and then get our Titan back. Plaza of Heroes. So it could also be a 5 color Legends deck. For now, Visionary gains haste. And no attacks. Okay, so Liliana can minus kill Visionary. Probably want to start with Cruelty to check out their hands. So we'll start on chapter 1. And another partner's. So we'll minus. The others can deal. Sorry, I'm not interested in dying today. And I'll attack with both. Fine to give up a shield counter here if they're willing to chump. Opponent's a 9. So would not be surprised to see Joda show up here. Opponent just cycling some tri lands. Did they find a creature? Nope. More cycling. And yeah, now our opponent seems pretty dead. Can get any card in our deck, remove the partners and attack for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems reasonable. A little bit slow to get going. Not being able to play Harvester on curve. But uh, should be able to play the rest of our spells on curve eventually. Opponent with a turn one forest and pack leader, so a green aggro deck. And I'll fetch either black or red, we'll go with black. So I can play Harvester and another fetch land next turn. Keep Haunted Ridge for later. And Beast Caller, kind of the premier two drop in the green aggro decks now. So we're gonna try and buy a bit of time here. Maybe eventually Cruelty can get a Meat Hook Massacre to wipe the board. I'll get some more green mana, in case we need to hard cast Titan of Industry later. Would love to find Soul of Windgrace. Get back our fetch land. And a 5-4 that can turn indestructible. Great against a green deck. For now we can expect Beast Caller to grow twice. And attack past Harvester. Now... Could just take the damage, next turn play another Harvester, so we have two blood tokens to kill Beast Caller. That's probably the play, as opposed to trading and then playing another Harvester, because then Beast Caller's gonna get out of hand in the meantime. Okay, so Harvester number two here. Kill Beast Caller. They get to move the two plus one counters, so still going to be an uphill battle, as we haven't drawn too many spells in the meantime, but hoping that our cruelty can still catch us back up. And our opponent's probably going to be empty-handed, so can maybe skip the first chapter, go straight to chapter two or three. Maybe an oddity here, 4-4 four, four with haste and trample, would grow both pack leaders. So then we would take 10, trade for pack leader, never mind, defile or vigor, possibly even scarier. That does not easily die to a meat hook massacre. And I'll uh, take the trade. And then I might just need to sack a blood token here. Not sure what we're hoping to accomplish with cruelty. Need to find something like an infernal grasp to kill the filer. Well, I don't think that quite does it. Titan 
would have been useful to discard to then reanimate with cruelty, but we're one mana short of doing it with our second blood token. Liliana just makes him sacrifice greeters, so it does not keep us alive. So I think that means just discarding Titan with a blood token and hoping to find another relevant spell that we can cast instead. Because yeah, I could cast Cruelty, Reanimate, Harvester, maybe keeps me alive, but doesn't really put us in a winning position either. So, discard Titan and hope to draw something relevant, which we did not. Small chance your opponent attacks Liliana if they don't see a lethal, but I doubt it. Even had we picked up Flame Blast Bolt, we can exile Greeters, make them sack Pack Leader, and then Defiler we can maybe beat with a Titan eventually. But we should just be dead now. Cemetery Prowler can also exile Titan, so that's a nice answer to it. And we seem pretty dead. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand seems a little slow on the draw. Playing a Fable as our first move. Although it does set up our Cruelty nicely, as we can discard Desecrator, bring it back. So maybe it's still worth it, but hoping we're not up against a very aggressive start. Do we see an underdog on turn 2? We don't. His opponent also kept a slow one, maybe more of a black mid-range deck as opposed to aggro. Which lands to fetch here. Shouldn't matter too much. Abandoned Mire implies they don't have a ton of extra lands in hand. Trespasser is scary. Hoping to find a Liliana to answer it, but uh, we'll still play Fable here. Maybe it was worth it to grasp Trespasser so we can then play Fable, discarding the same turn we reanimate with Cruelty. We'll see how this plays out. Expecting a Liliana maybe. Yep. Killing our Shaman. And we found our own Liliana, which can take care of Trespasser. So I think I'm okay discarding both of our expensive creatures. And Bolt could take care of Liliana as well, but I might want to keep this for an underdog. Plus, if I want to guarantee cruelty next turn, I should play my tap lands anyway. So another Trespasser can exile one of my two big creatures, but we'll still have the other one. And then a Cemetery Desecrator could also remove loyalty counters of Liliana. Liliana plussing. What do we discard? Could be Infernal Grasp, could be Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Those are the two main candidates. Kind of want to keep another Fable so we are more likely to eventually get Reflection copying something powerful. And yeah, opponent seems to be missing red mana after they discard Harvester. And another Trespasser sadly is going to exile Titan here most likely. Yep. Okay. So we'll plus with Liliana. Now our fetch land can probably go. And then Cruelty bring back... Desecrator can finish off there, Liliana. Or I could get rid of uh, Trespasser as well. I think getting rid of Liliana is better. And then I'll keep their Trespasser in case we need to get a 3 mana card out of the graveyard. This way we get to keep the Desecrator plus Reflection combo alive if they don't have removal. It's gonna be Infernal Grasp killing Desecrator. 
can still kill Trespasser on the way out now by exiling either Liliana or another Trespasser. And I'll go with Liliana since we can maybe reanimate their Trespasser with our cruelty. And at this point maybe discard Bolt since they haven't shown Underdog. Another Liliana. I guess we'll uh, just plus here. Ooh, they had an Infernal Grasp left over. Would have been a reason to play Fable first. So we could have at least copied our Reflection token. And then if they cast it in response, I could have uh, maybe just not plussed. I reckon their Bank Buster is also a nice one. So, yeah, we actually could be in a bit of trouble. Another Liliana is not too helpful. So let's attack for two. And then I don't think there's a great reason for me to plus Liliana. We'll just keep her at three. And potentially make them sacrifice two creatures. Since we're unlikely to get to an ultimate before it's going to matter. And Invoke Despair would be a pretty clean answer to everything on the board. Graveyard Glutton now, a 4-4. Can also crew Bankbuster to finish off Liliana. But if they crew to kill Liliana, then they won't be able to crew to save Glutton from the second Liliana. Okay. Got a reflection coming up. Hopefully draw something exciting, and Titan of Industry certainly counts. So for now I'm still liking Liliana minus two. And then next turn I'll be able to play Titan and copy it right away. Which might catch the opponent off guard. Opponent's gonna draw. We get to untap. And uh, now what? Maybe cast our Titan before plussing Liliana. That resolves. Make a Rhino get a shield counter. Titan itself. And then we can attack with our Shaman and then still be able to copy Titan. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. The Reflection plus Titan combo steals another game. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand feels a little bit too clunky with all three drops, even though I can cast a Liliana on curve. Maybe that's still good enough. Just triple Liliana them. Okay. If our opponent's a creature deck, they're going to be tempted to finish off Liliana, so we don't take too much damage in the meantime. And the Soul of Wind Grace, excellent with our Overlook. So we'll get a Swamp. Opponent playing Grixis. And at least they're not off to a blazing start. So we get another Swamp. And then... Maybe play our Fable next turn. If they don't present a creature for us to kill. A Wandering Mind. Pretty good against Liliana. Can find a spell. But I'm still happy enough making them sacrifice it. And then next turn, Soul of Wind Grace, get immediate value. Getting back Overlook to help us ramp. Space. Invoke Despair is going to be in our future. Pretty powerful card in a grindy matchup like this. Opponent potentially keeping up a counter spell as well. So I'm going to hazard a guess that Meat Hook Massacre is not going to be amazing in this matchup, even though it's still an enchantment for us to sack to a Despair. But I think I prefer discarding it here still. We all have things we'd rather forget. 
and then see if Soul of Wind Grace resolves. Opponent's gonna cast a big score in response. And Wind Grace resolves, getting back. Could also just get the opponent's land at this point, so we keep more basics in our deck. Although I don't really want to draw basics either. Yeah, I'll get Overlook also gains a life. And we can grab a forest. Although, could also see myself wanting to cast multiple Lilianas in the same turn. Although casting Titan of Industry is also a priority. So Invoke Despair kills Liliana and Soul of Windgrace. So that's probably going to be the play. And next up, play Fable. Fading Hope deals with our Shaman. Alright, so hopefully they don't cast too many more copies of Invoke Despair, but it's probably part of the opponent's game plan. They've got their own Fable. Could grasp it now, I think I'm just gonna use Liliana to minus instead. Ooh, Cruelty of Gix. So, that's also tempting. I think we'll wait a turn on it. Do I want to discard anything? Maybe one Liliana can still go. And then Liliana minus on Shaman, keep up Infernal Grasp, next turn, cast Cruelty. Can also pressure the opponent into maybe discarding counter spells, which could deal with our Cruelty. Alright, make disappear with Casualty. Would have been a reason to play land first, I suppose. But uh, yeah, we traded for a counter spell and a creature, so that works for me. Opponent cycling lounge. So they're light on action. They probably don't have any creatures or planeswalkers in hand, so I probably shouldn't bother going with the first chapter. And instead I can go straight to chapter two. Get a Titan of Industry. Sounds pretty good here. As tempting as it may be to look at their hand. Could also chain together Cruelties, although I won't have many creatures to get back in the meantime. I guess Soul of Windgrace isn't bad. Now let's go straight for Titan. And pass it back. Alright, put on with a Glamour Thief. Could kill it with Grasp, although that would get back a spell from the graveyard, like Invoke Despair, which we probably want to avoid. Since that'll kill Reflection end of turn, although we could kill it with a Titan of Industry, unless they've got a counter spell, of course. What am I getting back with Cruelty? Could get back the opponent's Wandering Mind, but probably gonna go with the Soul of Windgrace. Uh, let's untap. Harvester the draw. Let's get Soul of Windgrace. Fetch land versus the opponent's land. Get a fetch land. One basic left. And if we're afraid of a counterspell, I could also play Harvester, which I can still copy with Reflection and have it be pretty good, as opposed to tapping out for a Titan of Industry. Okay, that works. And uh, I'll try to copy it. See if they want to kill it in response. If they do Fading Hope to bounce. I'll just replay it. So that would have been a potential answer to a Titan getting copied as well. Opponent doesn't know that we have a Titan in hand, by the way. Alright, make disappear, sacking Cormila to get Invoke Despair back, presumably. 
so we won't be able to pay. So that happens. And uh, yeah, we'll pass a turn. And sadly, we're going to lose our reflection here. Not much I can do about it. So there's Invoke Despair. And then I can sack Reflection as my creature, so we don't have to sack both creatures at least. And keep Soul of Wind Grace. And then I'll hang on to Infernal Grasp. Can play Titan next turn. May not be able to pay for another counterspell. Um, especially if they cast it with Casualty, which would be a reason to Infernal Grasp Reflection. But Titan, destroying an enchantment is quite tempting too here. So I think I'm still gonna untap. Okay, found a land, although this one I might want to keep around to get something back out of the graveyard. So step one, probably attack with Soul of Wind Grace. Get the opponent's land now. And a Xander's Lounge is good enough. And then attempt to cast a Titan of Industry. That resolved pretty smoothly. So destroy enchantments and either shield counter or Rhino Token. Given that they're playing Invoke Despair, I think Rhino Token makes more sense. And then we'll pass. Can use Soul of Wind Grace to draw by discarding Abandoned Mire. Might want to keep it around for other purposes. Okay, so can sack the Rhino. Opponent draws, but they're not really applying any pressure with uh, creatures here. So we can try and outgrind them. Get to untap. Fable the draw. So let us attack. Get back another land. Deal 12. Okay. And sure, we'll play Fable out. And hang on to Abandon Mire to maybe make our Soul of Wind Grace indestructible. And Abandon Mire could also go for Liliana if we really want to. And our opponent explodes! Awesome! So we managed to outgrind a nice Grixis control deck here. And yes, Soul of Wind Grace proving to be a great card, not only helping us ramp, but also just a nice source of potential card advantage if we manage to use the abilities. So quite satisfied with how the deck performed. Flame Blast Bolt seems like a well-positioned card, not only dealing with Planeswalkers, but also with Tenacious Underdog, which is a pretty tough card to deal with in these grindy matchups, so you absolutely want to have a way to exile it eventually. The Cemetery Desecrator, another neat tool in this deck where you can potentially search it up with the Cruelty of Gix, so having a few one-off tutor targets is not a bad idea. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.